Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy February. Happy birthday to my sister. And welcome to Tuesday Traces. Tonight, it's a family affair. Uh, we'll be hearing from one of our most favorite V1 family members, the legend, Nancy Q. Uh, a few housekeeping items before I welcome Nancy. The recording of tonight's webinar will be available on the V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days. If you're registered for the event tonight, you'll automatically get a copy of the re uh, recording or a link to the recording. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel through the link in our chat. About that link um, in our chat, about the chat, the girls will populate all sorts of links throughout the night, so keep an eye on it. Um, they'll send my contact information as well as Nancy's contact information and uh, links throughout the evening as we chat. Um, about the recordings, I know a bunch of people are waiting on the recordings of the virtual summit. Anna is working her butt off. I promise she has finished eight of the 14 seminars. They are available on our YouTube channel and she will um, have the others available probably by the end of the week. Um, I like to keep these webinars super casual and we love interacting with the folks that have tuned in. So please feel free to post questions in the chat window. Um, I will do my absolute best to ask them at the appropriate times and get to all of them. If we don't, please accept my apology in advance and we will email you to answer your question after the fact. Um, speaking of questions, specifically about the pressure mat, I'm getting a ton of questions about the little uh, announcement that I made about our V1 pressure mat certification. The uh, process will be complete end of the week and we will be ending out emailing out the link to fill out the certification. Um, once you fill it out, you'll be emailed your certificate. Uh, V1 Sports is a 25 year old company and we are the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. We call our clients family members and we feel very strongly about offering the best service and support so that our instructors can focus on teaching and growing their golf businesses. In addition to our software solutions, we provide hardware solutions, including high speed cameras and computers. And of course that V1 pressure mat that I love selling to golf instructors. It's the world's most powerful and portable solution to measure pressure, pressure velocity and dynamic force throughout the golf swing. Um, I am Mandy Von C. I'm the regional sales manager for uh, V1 Sports. I'm based in Charleston, South Carolina. Just a quick note about my team. We are growing. Uh, we've got Chip Carell in the Northeast, Kenny Hatcher in Texas, Ryan Burke in the West, and Jim Doherty in the Midwest. So please don't hesitate to let the boys and I know if there's anything we can do to help you. Um, questions, hardware upgrades, questions about the pressure mat, how to make it all integrate, we're uh, happy to chat. Tonight, I am beyond honored to welcome my friend and our very first LPGA National Teacher of the Year and Golf Magazine Top 100 Teacher, among tons of other Golf Digest honors, Nancy Corsolina, or you may know her better as Nancy Q. Thank you so much for joining us, Nancy, and welcome. I am so excited to be here tonight. And uh, when you said 25 years, you got it. I was there when you first started. <laughs> you were, you were, you are one of the first. All right, let me tell everybody a little bit about you if you don't know Nancy. Um, if you don't, you're crazy because you should, she's awesome. She started <laughs> playing golf at the age of eight and took that all the way to college golf at Western Kentucky. She began her career at Florida State University as a women's golf coach. And after numerous head instructor positions, she finds herself with her own golf school. The Nancy Q, Q School of Golf which is located at Gaylord Springs Golf Links in Nashville, Tennessee. Throughout her very impressive career, she's been a part of the V1 Sports family um, and one of our first, and we could not love her more. Um, so Nancy, thanks for being one of the first. And I, I, gotta, I gotta start with this one question. When you decided to start teaching 25 years ago, you chose a piece of technology. Why did you choose V1? Why did you choose video? Well, video at that time, we, we had video. We had VHS cameras and we had all of that. I had all of that well before uh, cell phones because <laughs> some of you were not born when I started in the company in 1995, I get that. But I had the VHS camera, it was called a Sony Caddy Cam where mm -hmm. I gave people a VHS tape and then they brought that tape back to me and we looked it over and did and went on. So it, it needed to go digital and it was awesome when it did. And so 
there was only when I went to the show and saw what V1 was doing, I knew at that time that I needed to be a part of it and my golf school needed to be a part of it. And but it, it was several reasons. I have a brand. I the Nancy Corsolino School of Golf, every video that I send out has it goes right into my website they have to go to my website to look at that video and to see it so my brand is all over v1 yes i'm a branded academy yes i do pay for that but it's something that i will i will always do video is not going to go away and because of the technology and because of what it has done the students that I had years ago, if they came back to me, and I did, I had a, I had a student um, that came to back to me like five or six years after the first lesson, and he came back and I gave him a lesson, sent off the video, and he came back the next week. He says, "Oh my God, I never knew that those other videos existed. I never <laughs> saw them. It was so cool to see them ten years ago." And I'm going, "Oh my gosh, I've been sending all these videos, and he didn't." Uh, why <laughs> he never opened them then that's okay i mean because right. he has them now and they never go away i mean you must have a huge server because they never go away those well, people isn't that cool that people can see their golf swing 10 years apart i mean yeah that's it's so cool it is really cool to see kids that i had that are now adults that see those if they just look at the uh maybe combine two accounts if they had an old uh, uh you know, email address or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's really, really cool for people to see the transformation from one lesson to another lesson to another. Video is not going to go away. Um, you know, it's always going to be part of our life. Everybody has an iPhone. Everybody's going to sit there. I see it all day long. We're taking oh, right there. Show, let me show you. Friends are taking pictures of it and videos of it. And I have teacher friends that will not send the videos to students. I'm going why why would you not do that because it's so cool when somebody shares my video to somebody else mm -hmm. and they see what they're working on they may go try it out maybe they come see me it just keeps going Growing. around there's just no reason for people not to do this awesome all right so i always start with the same question which is what led you to golf instruction and before i have you answer that I know that you played golf from a very young age, but you also love snow skiing and you played field hockey and then you almost majored in music and you coached badminton. So yes. besides the, having the most interesting career path, how did you get into golf from field hockey, snow skiing and coaching badminton? Did no, I didn't really? coach, no, I didn't coach badminton. I played at a very high level. Okay, okay. that's even cooler. I played at a very high level badminton and I and I that was my first job offer was at Northwestern University to go uh, coach and and train those teams there at Northwestern. But I went, you know, I really I'm okay. I want to do golf. I want to I want to be in the golf business. So I did the very traditional thing of um, well before that I was uh, I was at school at Florida State. So. And I was doing my master's program at Florida State. So I graduated from college, but there was no high school women's golf team when I was in high school. I got to college one year. Um, you know, we didn't have a women's golf team, but I played field hockey because of, of physical education. Hey, you know, you play golf you need to come be on our team. And that's how I got on the team. So I played the next three years, went and continued my education because I was going to be a physical education teacher. That's what I was studying for. So I went to Florida State and uh, I called on the coach there and I said, hey, I'm here. Would you like some help? I'd be happy to help. He said, yeah, come in. You can recruit for me. So here I am recruiting at Florida State for the women's golf team. And I was uh, uh, an assistant coach at first and then I became the interim coach and they wanted me to take it over as the head coach, but I needed to go back. I needed to go back home. My mother was having some uh, health issues and I needed to go back to uh, Kentucky. So I didn't take that position. Uh, so when I got back, I needed the traditional, I just went the traditional route of working in a, uh, at a country club as an assistant professional 
where I then got hired as the head professional. Then I got hired as the general manager. Then I moved to Tennessee and he hired, uh, uh, Mike Eller hired me at Hermitage Golf Course to be the head professional there. Then we had a Sara Lee Classic LPGA event for 10 years. And so then I said, I want to teach. And I told Mike, I said, I want to teach golf. I don't want to I don't want to do this anymore. He says, no, Nancy, I need you here. And I said, look, I know how much money you make, Mike. I know how much money I make because I wrote all the checks. I said, right. let me do something that I want to do. And he said, OK. And so he let me go. Let me start my golf school. I actually uh, started in 92, 1992, brought Reed in in 94, where we formed the Nancy Corsolino School of Golf. And the rest is history. That's and awesome. Been at it ever since. Wow. So you said at one point you worked for Bobby Bowden and you have a quick story about that. So I'm, I'm <laughs> curious because I went to Clemson and I was at the first Bowden Bowl. And yeah. of, of the best coaches, golly, in football, those are a couple of them. What, what's your quick story about Bobby well, Bowden? My, my quick story is I'm at Florida State. I'm paying out-of-state tuition. I'm paying for all my school. I have no scholarships. And so I, uh, I went to the athletic director and I said, you know, they, they put me on as an assistant coach, but that was making a little bit of money. So then they said, hey, we want you to sell uh, uh, programs. I said, okay. But Mr. Bowden said, Nancy, why don't you just come and you can wash all the uniforms. So every morning at six o'clock. Are you serious? I'm serious. Every morning at six o'clock, I would go in and wash all the jocks and socks and uniforms and everything for that, for the practice, for the games, for everything. I put the tomahawks on the helmets. Oh my God, that's so cool. And I gained that uh, nice because I got to eat at the uh, training table every day. I gained that nice uh, way freshman 10, way, way over there. G gained all that weight because I got to do, but I, I got to see the one of the best coaches ever be hand on one of the best coaches ever very so that's been, that's worth you know, i mean anything you can do in the trenches but be next to somebody like that is uh, free, right was, so you know we, we're going to get into traces i swear in a minute we're going to look at pressure data but what you just shared about your career path is pretty spectacular i mean you started playing golf at eight you went through all the different roles in the golf world until you decided to teach so Maggie from Norway asked a question that is perfectly appropriate and well-timed for right now. Um, and, she, and she is asking for you to share tips that you have for young people who are hoping to make a career out of coaching golfers and being PGA professionals. Uh, well, do, do it all. You know, find out what it is that you want to do. I did it all. And because of that, I really, when I started teaching people and I had... I had that radio on my hip because if the if somebody on the first tee or out there needed me, I had to leave that lesson tee. But I wanted to be out there and have that connection with people. So the best tip I can I can tell you is that to be true to yourself, be honest to yourself. Um, and, you know, go through your PGA or LPGA uh, certification with what you want to do with that. It, I always tell the young ones get certified in something. Go go find out in your area. See, when I first started, nobody else was teaching full-time. Nobody in the state of Tennessee. I had the first golf school. So you understand at that time, people are going, oh, you mean I can have a lesson on this day? Yeah, come on out because I'm teaching. You know, I'm not behind a counter for eight hours and then going right. out. Uh, but I've been an independent contractor from day one. I've never uh, and when I let go of the uh, director of golf head professional, that's when my salary went away and my independent contractor status came in. I haven't taken a salaried uh, deal from anybody, except I am teaching uh, online classes right now. So if, that, if you can call that a salary, I'm just teaching online classes for Kaiser University College of Golf and the LPGA in their education. So I'm doing that as well as nice. teaching down here, so. Nice, okay, so one question, um, and then I wanna talk about a little bit about your relationship with V1. So when we spoke on Saturday, we challenged you, we were, we were just kind of brainstorming. 
if you could think of any other industry where the consumer is as close to the vendor for such a long time and in such an intimate relationship as V1 Sports is to the golf coach. And, you know, I want to, I, I, we, we talked about this on Saturday, but I want to say, you know, V1 looks at support and service as in you're on the lesson tee and if something goes wrong, you need to be able to keep teaching. So do you think, you know, and there's, you know, we, we support so many instructors and have for so long. Do you think there's another industry that's this close that, that has such an intimate relationship with vendor versus client? No, I, I don't see that. I mean, I know that people that teach any kind of uh, action oriented sport, anything that they do, this would be perfect for them. Absolutely perfect. But I don't know any other really um, any other venue that could use this. So now you, you, I'm sure there's tennis coaches out there that use it. I'm sure, mm -hmm. you know, baseball. I'm sure, yeah, of course, baseball. Uh, I mean, any throwing motion, anything can all be analyzed and done. So, but any other venue, I just don't know of what I, I, I rack my brain. I don't yeah. have a, I do. We think it's pretty cool that you got, you know, you have for 25 years been using something for V1 every single day, you know, 25 times a day, maybe. Um, okay, so we've been around a really long time. There's about 27 employees, give or take, at V1. Um, I don't know anybody that knows or any team that is so connected. So just really quickly, Mike Brown, our CEO, COO, he said you were his very, the very first client he ever met with V1. Um, Jim Van Lenty said, Nancy, I just talked to her this morning. She's one of my favorite calls to see come in and he sees them all come in. He has caller ID. Bob Foda said that for years, you and Rita have been um, his favorite people to see at the PGA show because you guys always put a smile on his face. And then John Watson, who, if you know John, he's awesome. He's one of the most brilliant people. Um, he's, he spoke very highly of you. He said, I love Nancy. She's always a pleasant customer to speak with. So Needless to say, we are fans. We love you. So is Thank the you. LPGA. Um, really quickly, if you don't know, the LPGA Teaching and Club Professional Hall of Fame established in 2000 is the highest honor given to teaching and club professional members for extraordinary membership, service, and leadership. Um, Nancy was inducted into this group in 2012. Nancy, just tell us about receiving that honor, and then we're going to look at some videos. Oh, my goodness. You know, there's so many honors, but to have the highest honor uh, portrayed on me at that time was just, uh, it was beyond uh, exciting. It was a great evening. It, it happened at the Solheim Cup that was out in Colorado Springs, and it happened on at that venue. I'll never forget. People walked in to that evening that I haven't seen in years. Mike Eller and Barbara, they came from Tennessee. I didn't know they were coming. They came from Tennessee. Uh, and I had friend, lots of people, lots of people that came and, and supported, uh, supported me with that. And I, I tell you what, it was just a really, really high honor to, to be a part of that family that, uh, that um, it's just pretty cool. How many people have been inducted into that? Oh my gosh, let me go back and look. Uh, I can't, re uh, I'm sorry, I didn't look at it. 10, 20? No, it's something like 25, 26 or something like that. It's, uh, it happens every two years. So I can't remember when the first, I'm terrible. I can't remember when the first. That's okay, it's just, I'm a po the point is, it's a really big deal. There's only yes. yeah. under, 30, under 30 in the uh, Hall of Fame. Okay. So you use the V1 pressure mat you have for a while. Um, I know you guys that are tuned in, just know that Nancy is in Florida. Um, she's got Systems Mobile in Florida and of course her studio in Tennessee. So we're actually gonna help her share and drive some videos tonight. Uh, the first one is Miss Lori Rinker, who is Larry Rinker's sister, um, who is a student of Nancy. So Anna is gonna do a screen share and then I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna let you tell everyone um, about Lori and what you did on the pressure mat and how, how it's going. So well, uh, Lori and I have been working together uh, for about five years. She'll come to Nashville, see me there. Uh, when I'm down here, she lives in Stewart, so I get to see her. In fact, I see her Thursday. I've seen her three times that I'm down here, and so we're pretty much working on the same type things. And she has just a, a normal, very normal trace 
It's, uh, it's not uh, anything uh, out of the ordinary, except for the fact that she doesn't put a lot of pressure to the right side. So as you can see, the trace itself, she's, she leans left, and a lot of pros uh, start their pressure left-sided. So you'll see that. So she's, uh, she's left-sided with her weight at the start. Then she's going to go to the top of the backswing and uh, go ahead and play that. Then you're going to see it go just sideways a little bit to the top of the backswing. And then she's just going to go sideways to that lateral trace right through. And uh, some, of the, uh, some of this is just, she just doesn't have a lot of movement to the back side. So she doesn't do a lot of shifting to the right side. So we have to figure out why her, why she doesn't, why she hasn't gotten her uh, distance back. So uh, she lost a little bit of distance from uh, playing when she was on the tour to now. She still hits it nicely and long, but the biggest thing that I'm trying hard to do right now is to get her to, uh, to push up, to pressure up instead of just going sideways and around. She has a tendency to, to head around with her body and finish on the left side around and she'll even throw the club to the round, so around her body. So we're trying to get her to move up and use that pressure to move up, but she doesn't, she loses that pressure by turning. And, um, and it's really interesting to talk to a, a pro that has been around for a long time. They don't, they didn't hear this when they played professionally. They didn't hear about, you know, pressing for pressing up and pushing and using the ground. And so because of that, she it's a very hard thing for her to think. So we're trying a lot of different things. And I've asked her, this is what I've asked her to do. She I said, can you tell me when you do it, what do you feel? Can you tell me when it's the same, what do you feel? So she's trying to figure out when the feel is good and what happened, and then when the feel is not so good and what happened. So, uh, and that's what we're doing. We're trying to get her to pressure up, pressure up with the shoulder instead of turn. She, she feels like that when she swings with her left arm, then she's just going to go around. And that pressure trace on the follow through, uh, she, has, she has that movement down to that outside in outside left heel too fast. So, and I saw the down underboard come up. I know I haven't got it yet. Uh, I'll get it though, but uh, I have a, I have several different pressure boards, but uh, I don't have the down under yet, but I just saw that pop up. But um, that's, cool. that's what we're doing. Nancy, we've got a question in the Q and A section as well. I don't know if you can see that. Jennifer Gregane has asked, she's asking if you do leg dominance testing. I do, as a matter of fact, I, I do my own testing with dominance with, uh, with eyes and legs and arms. And what I've done, you understand, is uh, I've had uh, Lori swing a club one-handed, the other-handed, and I've had her swing. Uh, I've had her also swing around with her uh, legs to see. She has that turning motion, so uh, she is very much left side dominant and we're trying to get her to push and move with the right. Anna, can you play that follow through that Nancy was just talking about? And when you say pressure up, Nancy, what do you mean by that? Uh, pressure up, I'm trying to get her, she has a little bit of downward motion. She has some uh, downward motion where she goes this way and before she goes up. And so that downward motion and then a turn gets her into trouble. Okay. Okay. Do you ever um, show her the prep? Do you ever put an iPad in front of her? Uh, no, not in front of Lori. But you, you, you show her the pressure trace and you guys talk about it. That's correct. And I show, uh, I show her the video, but she's a, uh, she is a field player and she'll watch the video and she'll study it later, but she doesn't want to see it during the, during the lesson. Interesting. Is that because she's yeah. such a high level player? Um, that's my assumption. Uh, most people, have, yeah. most people are not field players or if they say they are, they're not really good at it though. Right. I mean, 
Well, no, I think you're exactly right. She can't feel anything she's doing. She just knows when it's good, when it's not by the sound of the hit and by the flight of the ball, but she can't feel what I'm doing. So I, I mean, the lesson is basically uh, with Lori is just basically saying, uh, I, I need you to feel more, more up pressure, more movement up pressure. I understand. So you're almost using the trace to see what she's doing. Yeah. Because her I'm using the video. probably I'm so tiny. It is. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like we're going to look at Brian's in a minute and we could all see what is going on with him. Right. Okay. Yeah. So um, we're going to look at another video of, of Dave Norman, but while Anna pulls that up, um, Sue Anderson has asked, she says the mat in your videos with Lori looks fairly thick. How does that affect the player's relationship with the ball? Sue, I will tell you that the mat is super thin. Um, it is two pieces. The top is the thickness of a really nice, like, uh, industrial not nice but an industrial size door it is nice of course an industrial size doormat snaps to the technology on the bottom it's less than half an inch thick um and it is flexible so you can put it in any lie most people that stand on it don't even uh think about it being there yeah. um do you have any do you ever have any issues uh nancy with people wanting the ball higher because they think they're standing on a mat and that would affect anything do you ever not at all not okay. at all yeah and especially if we put this uh, I mean, I can go out in a bunker with it. I can go on a putting green with it. I can go anywhere with it. And it's really, really good. So now I have uh, two mats. I have a, I don't have the new one that you all have. I have, these were from Body Track years ago. And so I have one that's a little longer and one's a little shorter. Uh, so, but they're all the same technology thickness. So, uh, and this one is the one that I have in my studio. Uh, and so, you know, no, it, people, and he's a professional, PGA professional. Many of you that if you're in the PGA, you probably know Dave Norman, uh, but Dave's from Clarksville, Tennessee. And he came to me last fall and says, I want to up my game. I'm turning at the age that I can play some of the senior events with the PGA and I want some help. So he came to me and uh, one of the first things that I did to help him was I, I needed to sh I needed to put him on the body track. So uh, now you're going to see a very different trace with Dave than you see with Lori. Lori has that trace goes straight across, no I, difference. But as you take Dave to the top of the backswing, Dave is going to move to his right toe. Now you're going to see a 50-50, and you're going to see at the top of the backswing that he is 70% on his right toe. And only wow. 30, there's 80% on the right toe. I mean, you understand he is completely on the toe. So he thinks he's turning, he thinks he's moving around, but yet he's being very stuck into that move. And then on the way down, he's going to continue that move to that toe, going to go 91, 88, 85, and he's going to try to get over to the left side. You're going to see that move where he uh, really gets slick, slick and slide. Uh, onto the other side and it's all because he's on his toes he uh, we got to get him off now you don't see that on video from this back camera angle he's at the top of the backswing and he has 70 percent of the weight on his on his right toe all right he wait stop right there stop yeah. right there everybody look at that this is the reason that you need a pressure mat this is a pga professional with a high level instructor and she is looking at a down the line video, we would never be able to see 70% of weight on his toes without a pressure mat under his feet. Do you agree with that, Nancy? Totally agree. He never would he ever, that you would never know that, never. Now, if, if you're looking straight ahead, there, there's a, in back of me, there's a TV. Right. Okay. okay. So you're gonna see the flight scope set up in back. That flight scope is projecting on the TV in front of him. Now, in back of me, over where you can't see, is the TV that has, uh, these are your all's cameras. Uh, yeah, I am from the South, what can I say? But these are your cameras, uh, the high-speed cameras, the new computer. This is the studio. We've set it up with the two cameras firing at the same time. And then in back of me, uh, if you're looking, if this is me hitting a golf ball, I can see my numbers when I get done. 
I can look over there, see my video as it comes through in the, in the, uh, the body track in the pressure mat over here. So we have all of that in this studio. So when I get back home, we're gonna do another one of these where I can do this for you all uh, in my studio. But again, I can't see that from here. Dave couldn't see it from here. He had to feel it. And so when I got him feeling, getting over into his inside of his heel, that's when he could finally figure out what he needed to feel because he never knew that he was coming through, go ahead and moving through to going into impact. He's going to move into that right toe even more. And you're going to see that heel kind of come up mm -hmm. and there it is. And he is now, you know, really going over there and then he gets tremendously stuck uh, at impact. And then that's when that ball flight's going to go all over the place because just because of the pressure of not getting that weight back on the right side, on that trail side and then coming through. And then he's just coming through with his, uh, you know, on his toes basically. So um, I, you know, I did several things to uh, try to help him with it. And, uh, you know, and that's, you know, it's just kind of fun. Let's try this. Let's do this. Anything we can feel, but until he could feel that he was pressuring in to the right out inside of his heel that he would never, never know. And I told at this, in this, um, I told him, I said, you need to go to Terry Hashimoto <laughs> and go to the traces to the toe up drill. And so yep. I had him, you know, get his toes up into the shoes to, and that's where I wrote on that video so that he won't forget that. Oh, that's so cool. You know, we always joke about all the funny names that you crazy golf instructors give to your drills because there's all kind of crazy names that you can remember. So I love that you've actually typed that yeah. in, using the text feature on the video with that's the great. pressure. I yes. mean, that's, that's actually great. I don't know how many people actually use that text typing yeah. tool to capture, you know, text on the video. That's a great thing to point out. Thank um, you. Yeah. Hey, Nancy, what'd you do other than giving him the toes up drill after this? I mean, I'm sure you guys had a conversation about the pressure. I'm well, sure you I tell did. them, you know, we need to get more weight in your heels other than that one drill. So what did I do? What I did was I asked, I brought the mat over the pressure mat over in front of the TV so that, uh, so the mat, my mat continues all the way back. So now he's in front of the TV and I told him, I said, don't look at the TV, just go to the top of the backswing. Now look up there now change the pressure. And that's when he, he could see where it was. Then he changed it. He says, I've never, I've never felt that ever felt that. Okay. So you guys that are watching, Nancy just gave us a drill. Like everyone get in your posture, go back and now get in your heels. Like we don't even right. have a mat. Yeah. I don't even I mean, have that, a mat. That is I said, go to there now, go there, get back and make that happen. Now I was, um, I was on all day with the PGA teaching and coaching summit and Pete Cowan. And you all just need to look this up. Pete Cowan, you can type it in on a, when you get a chance, Pete Cowan, it, the, uh, the spiral staircase, spiral staircase. He talks about the feet need to feel like this, like you're into the ground. So you're feeling like the feet are this way and you're spiraling around the feet. You got to feel like you're, toes and pressure is in that ground it's the only way you can feel it otherwise you're just moving around your feet are moving around your you know but you've got to feel like the feet are not digging in like a bunker not at all but just feel like you're pressuring down Grounded. and feeling like you're spiraling around and okay. that's the best way i could have that for you i like it i also like putting someone on a mat and just doing what you just did that's I right. mean, kids, same thing, balance, like figure out, you know, center of balance, toes, well, heels. Yeah. I mean, for toe, you know, they think they're even and they may be already on their uh, toes. They may be on their heels. But here's what I like about it. If you teach that all your weight needs to be on the toes, then you have a system that you can use to teach that move. Uh, whatever you believe in. If you don't believe that, the weight goes to the inside of the trail heel and you feel like it goes flat footed, you can train that on the, on the V1 pressure mat. Whatever you teach, you can train. So there you go. 
You don't have to, it doesn't have to be a certain way. You just, we're just giving you the data to figure it out. That's um, right. Okay, Dan has a question about his own golf swing. Um, Dan, you happen to have a really great instructor here. So I'm gonna ask her your question. Dan has a tendency of coming over the top when a ball is in front of him. He takes a practice swing, tapes it, and the swing is perfectly on plane. So he's asking for suggestions on how to correct the swing fall. That silly ball. Well, if, if we are looking at a, a pressure trace mat, because by the way, I have an over the top move, a very slight one, but I have, a, I have a slight move. And if you think about that, that move immediately goes from the inside of my heel to my toe. So what you, uh, in order to, if you have a pressure trace, you've got to just get that feel that, that you're not doing Dave's trace, that you're going to do Lori's trace. You got to find a way to push off to make that happen. So in my world, it happens because of my neck. I don't have a lot of mobility. I don't have anything wrong with my neck. I just don't have a lot of mobility this way or that way. So part of my reasoning is that I'm not in back. So most of that is because of a lack of turn. So you've got to feel that weight going all the way into the back trail heel. And you may even feel it if you get your arm getting in that arm and chest coming back farther, that will do it. If all you do is come to here, you're probably going to start to come over. But if you can get yourself a little bit more turn and get this shoulder back behind you, you'll start to feel that weight change. Awesome. Dan, I hope that answered your questions. And uh, we would love to hear from you. If you're out on the, on the uh, range messing around tomorrow, take that swing thought that Nancy gave us and let us know how it goes. Um, okay, let's look at a super junior, a baby, a little one. He's a family member. So this is, um, this is little B. This is Brian Brown. He's our CRO, Mike Brown's son. He's my boss's son. And uh, yeah, he, we, we haven't seen this before. So this is very interesting. So we're going to start out. So let's start out with where he is at the beginning. Again, good players have a little more pressure to the left side at start out. Okay, and you can see that little center pressure dot is in front of the impact line just a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and take him uh, all the way to the top of the back swing, and we're going to see the weight move to the basically to the heel. And I can't see the numbers; it's a little too small. Uh, let's see if I can get it. Oh, there's 77 percent weight on the right side that I can see, so I can see that. And I can't see the toe heel numbers, but that's okay. Now, as he starts to come down, you're going to see the weight move all the way. You're going to see the weight move. Go ahead and get that weight moving all the way. You're going to see it go all the way left. And then you're going to see him back it up. Now, after he swings, that little dot's going to go in back. And he's going to back up. And then he's going to come forward again. So my all all juniors have a tendency to back up the swing and they don't even know it. it's a really strong swing pattern and we call it a Z trace. And so you can go forward, come forward, and then you're going to feel like the weight's going to go backwards. And if it goes too far back, then he'll lose the weight on the right, it'll come back on the right foot, and not get over to the uh, lead side. So, but most junior golfers have that when they overturn you'll see them overturn at the end he'll lose his weight going forward and that happens when he overturns and he comes this way so we would just have him try to pose at the end of the swing just you know hold the pose take a picture take a, a camera picture at the end and see if he can't hold it and we would try to get his body to be just slightly left of target as opposed to way over on the other side but we see this in juniors as soon as he overturns too much then his weight's going to go backwards ah okay and so go. the z trace is okay in juniors and long drivers right that's correct and well i mean you know it's hard to you understand 
people have their own trace. I'm a lateral trace. I just go straight over. I don't have any movement, a lot of movement up or anything. And that's been my trace ever since I've had a body track. So I've always had it. So, uh, but there's the ones we want to get rid of are where they go back, they're on their heel, they go to the toe, then they go to this heel, then they go. When you see the pressure trace move everywhere, that's when we get involved and say, hold your, just hold your finish, throw something. And I'll take a picture of somebody throwing a ball. So, and I'll put it on the mat and I'll take a picture of them throwing and they'll see that trace go straighter. They'll see it go better. So if you give them into a momentum of something that they're used to, like a badminton move, when I played badminton, that move has been my move forever. I was never a tennis player. You know, never, I didn't like the big handle racket. I like that small one where I could uh, do, and I played racquetball. And so, and I was a high level badminton and racquetball player in college and loved it. And so, but that that's the movement. Find what somebody's doing and have them try to mimic that and see what it looks like on the trace. I love it. I love it. Um, do you, everyone goes crazy over pressure mat drills. Everybody loves our drills. And I know you filmed some today. We've got 20 minutes. Without, without a pressure mat, by the way. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. I don't have a pressure mat. So, so I'll tell you, we've got lots of people tuned in. One of my buddies is tuned in. His name's Jim Altamirano. He's a home studio user. He tunes into every single one of these. And whatever drill you talk about, he will do it live with us. I oh, promise awesome. you. And what if you tell him to go buy some crazy thing, you know, a noodle or a balance sure. board, he'll go out tomorrow morning and he'll have it. So he's here okay. and he's about to do exactly what you tell him. Even if, he, if you don't have a trick. Well, I'm sorry, you probably have heard every one of these, but what I do today, I went out and filmed some because I don't have all of my drills transferred over to this. Uh, hey, Jim, that's a, that's a last name too, by the way. So I like last names that are interesting, but <laughs> I, I don't have all my drills uh, moved over. So I filmed a lot of these drills and then I can actually give them to my students and I can, in the V1, after the lesson, I can plug in whatever drills that I want people to use. And so I've got, you know, probably 50, 60 drills that I move over and I do. And I'm filming all the time. So I'm you guys, drills. let me just elaborate. What Nancy's saying is she's filmed drills that she has in a drill library in her V1. So regardless of where she is teaching a lesson and regardless of what technology she's using, she can attach a file to the back of her voice lesson so that when that student gets it, not only are they seeing their video with Nancy talking to them and giving them instruction, but she can attach a drill video um, in the same file. I just wanna make sure everybody understands that because it is super powerful to get that package after a lesson. All right, so tell us some of your drills. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Awesome. So let me, uh, let me do this now. Alrighty, so you're going to see at the end here, you're going to see my wonderful face and we're going to go to the V1 Pro. That's the, that's the app that I use uh, myself. That's the one that the instructors can use is the V1 Pro. And so today I, uh, I was in uh, all black so that you could see everything that I was doing but also because it was a little chilly with the wind out there. So nonetheless, uh, so really as I start the analyzation, the only thing, Jim, this is for you, and I'm sure you have it. The alignment sticks are under my feet, okay? They're under my toes, actually. I'm gonna compare because I've got a second one here that I did. And so I, I'll split this into split view. So you're gonna see that I have the alignment stick right under my toes. So this gives me the feel because I have that little tendency and I'll go ahead and, and throw this. I'm an elbow plane. So you're going to see as I come uh, back, let me get this to the backswing, that I'm going to be a little under plane, but I'm trying to do that because I don't want to come so far under <laughs> over. Okay. But I have that move, but I'm trying to make that happen. This is me. So I'm trying to keep that move from happening really, really 
hard over we're all hit and hit the ground and hit it heavy so i'm trying to do everything i can so this was i did have this camera on a i on a tripod um, because it was it was really really windy and i had to put some heavy weight on it because otherwise it was going to blow down so you know you're gonna if you saw my if i put a line right here where i am with my rear end you're gonna see that i have very little movement to my toes, but I'm going to still have some. But that's been worse. Okay, so I'm really trying to get myself to stay on that line as much as I can. But I'm really trying to uh, keep this back swing back as much as I can. And you'll see it over here. I'm, that gives me my biggest turn. And so I do have a little itty bitty trying hard that oh. I'm so happy I don't have that little move out sway. Yay, uh, been working on that, okay? <laughs> so I film myself every day to make sure. And then I'm looking at where I am with the golf ball to make sure that I don't have my head get in front of that golf ball. I need that ear in back of that golf ball so that I'm gonna be able to feel like my hips go up, my shoulders go up, so I can feel that up trace if I had a body track. So I use the alignment sticks to make that happen. I'm using the alignment sticks to give me that feel. I do it to my students all the time that have that move. And I do that because you can see I still come forward a little bit. But uh, at this time, at least I'm not going into my right toe and digging into it and coming through. And I, it's very uh, uh, stiff right now because <laughs> I didn't hit any golf balls before this. These were my first two golf balls that I hit, by the way. And at home, if I was doing this drill, the cameras fire at the same time, which of is really course, cool. Of course, yeah. so this is the mobile setup. So um, the iPhone, yeah. iPad can only take it one yeah. time. So that's the hey, mobile how setup. Cool, how cool to see it, uh, an LPGA like master analyze your own swing. That, that is, thank you so much for that. Absolutely, because I'm trying hard to get myself to get up, move up, straighten up, and get that feel of my hips turning and my weight going on the outside of uh, my lead foot. I actually, my drills working up, I'm gonna lower this camera a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but my, no, you won't be able to see it. But what I'm trying Anna, to do- kill the share so we can see Nancy real quick. Thank you. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can, if you can see- Yeah, we see can it. see you. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually doing everything I can to get that foot and try to get because I have a tendency to stop into that left side. So even if I turn the foot out, I stop. So my warm up is just this. All I'm doing is turning and moving in to that hip. That's what I do because I have a really tight right here on the side of my leg and I've got to I've got to stretch that out before I hit. So it reminds me of it reminds me what you're just doing of Bryson's left foot getting out of the way for that big, right. powerful. I mean, if you watch Bryson's left foot and these, you know, when he's hitting a driver, he's doing what you just did. He's absolutely that's getting right. those toes out of the way. So yeah. that's a good thought to have. Um, hey, well, Nancy, do you ever put people on the pressure mat with no shoes? Oh, absolutely. I put, I put people down here, take their shoes off and hit barefooted. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. And I highly recommend it. There's a lot of people here that, that are new. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm hoping they're instructors take, tell yeah. people to take their shoes off. You can actually see them lift their feet. Or have I mean, it's crazy. Out. It's absolutely crazy. Good. I had a, I had a young man at Hermitage golf course. One of my first lessons, he was trying to get on the senior tour and he came to every lesson barefooted. And that's the first time I saw it. And from then you'll see some of my students barefoot just making sure there's no T's on the ground. Did you all see that weird picture where somebody took the turf off of a T, they were redoing the T, they, they, they stripped the turf off and there's all these little T's broken underneath the turf. Isn't that crazy? It's crazy. That's so crazy. All right, I'm gonna show you. I've got a question. Here. I've got a question. Another question sure. from Jennifer Gregane. I work with high performance juniors, 14 to 17 years old. We see a lot of reverse spine tilt and subsequent, subsequently not a lot of trail foot pressure. Is that a pattern you see? And if so, can you recommend a drill? So would you say that again? 
Um, a lot of reverse spine tilt and not a lot of trail foot pressure. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, I mean, I think there's three things that people need to learn how to do. They either learn, need to learn how to turn so that they pressure into that heel or they learn how to turn without putting that a lot of pressure into that and put more pressure forward and then they have to uh, they have to feel like they really really get over here to the side so one of them is just a a twisting measurement the other one is a shift and the other one is a a more forward so you have to think now are the, you know surely they're not a stack and tilt but they could be you know they could be a stack and tilt so you just have to wonder if if they're that way but yes i i think i see juniors more so and i'm going to tell you the reason i have a little over the top swing is that my mom's clubs were cut down for me and they were heavy at the very beginning they were heavy at the very beginning so i've always had well okay so some of you weren't born so when i started with v1 uh steel shaft is what i started out with five foot two i've I've always been five two since I was seventh grade, and I've always had a heavy club until so now. So, do you think um, club fitting for juniors is more important than we think? I think club fitting for juniors is, and you know, and unfortunately, it's going to change like every year with them. So, but it's it, you'll you'll ruin a junior if you don't have the right equipment in their hand. Right. Okay. You want to show us another drill? I can. So I need to share the screen again if that's okay yes and i'm sorry i keep making you do it but i really like seeing you no. when i talk to you so no i'm good i'm good i'm going to make sure that it uh that it's in there i'm sharing it so let me get into my v1 again so that's my first one that i do with uh with the uh uh alignment sticks there and i do it sometimes i will take uh things that you put under the door what are they just the little what are those things called uh door stoppers i'll put them right. on people's toes i'll put that up there uh i'll show you the next one that i do and it's very hard to see but uh, you have to look very closely at my feet and again okay. the reason why i wore black shoes today so you're going to see that my uh, i kind of pick up my left toe what i'm doing there's my right toe Actually, I'm taking my, I'm doing that drill that I told to Dave Norman. I'm having him curl toes up into the top of the shoes. So this is basically what I do. And again, I'm on a tripod so that you're going to see this. So what I look at is I'm looking if my rear end's going toward the ball. I'm looking if my knee is going toward the golf ball. Because this is what I do is I feel like my toes are up. And so when I get to the top of the back swing, and I'm not going to do the over the top move because that's always going to happen. That's always been my move. But you're going to see that if I toe up my toes, yes, I still come a little bit forward, but not as much. Mm -hmm. So the toe up drill, now my right knee gets a little in front. But again, what I'm trying to do is I'm really trying to get that left hip uh, cleared out and get not tight with my lower body but this is actually much better my move here i'm not coming off those lines so the toe up drill is another great drill that i do uh, the alignment sticks then let me go into uh the last one that i did and then the tripod was getting ready to blow over and i'm going i i can't film any more of these these this wind is going crazy okay <laughs> And I don't even know. Yeah, you can see the palm trees kind of blowing a little bit. Okay. So again, what I'm doing is I'm going to put uh, myself on a uneven lie. So I've got a ball above the feet. And this is a great way. Uh, again, it's very simple. It's a great way to teach people how not to move to their toes. And uh, so you'll see if that helps stay in there and i still go forward <laughs> but i don't go forward with my knees okay so the key is is that i have just a slight move but i am on that tilted hill and uh, with that i'm trying to stay as much as i can uh, on that tilt as much as i can trying not to move up and extend 
forward. So those were the drills that I did, which was interesting. I also uh, gave a lesson to a gentleman today, and let me get to him. And I, I was just helping. He was just he was asking some questions, and and I was just uh, helping him out. And uh, and so I'm going to uh, show you a before and after, so that you will you will see a before and after. He says that he he struggles getting uh, over to his lead side, and so he would push that right knee forward so that he would feel like he's going to get over to that left side. So, you know, and so what do you, he also said, I need to, I really need to uh, compress the ball. I, I need to, I need to press in, press into with the ball. So I had my flight scope on, didn't have my body track, but I had the flight scope. He has a, a seven iron that had a 29 degree loft and he was de-lofting it to 15 degrees. I'm going, Hey, you're doing it enough. <laughs> You're doing it too much. Right. So all I did was say, I don't want that little move to happen. I don't want you to push that knee forward. I, I don't want that to happen because this, uh, this is the before and this is the after. Okay. And so what I asked him to do, he's a football player. So I asked him to do a look in a, in a feel. And basically we were working. If I had the pressure mat, he would have felt it. And I didn't have the pressure mat. So we're going to go uh, to the top of the backswing with this one. And you're going to see that knee immediately come out. So it didn't do any good. <laughs> okay. Right. So if that knee starts there, now we would assume that it should end there, which it did. So he has it by looking at this, he has enough pressure forward. He's de-lofting the club too much. The deal is, is he needed to feel up very similar to what I'm trying to do with my left hip. So I'm trying to get into this move, this one, and I, this is where I had to hang on to the iPad because uh, the, the wind was blowing so hard, it was gonna blow over. So what I needed him to do is to impact to feel like this left hip is moving up. This one's turning. So we're gonna get into impact here and he still has enough pressure forward which is great but here on the right side he's turning around you know and i did nothing to the right hand grip by the way and i saw that question did nothing to that mm -hmm. so but this is you're going to see a little different move now notice here that his right leg is finally uh his thigh is almost touching the left thigh yep I wouldn't, all I did was don't press that leg forward, you know, and I need the left hip moving up. And so by doing that, if the pressure mat was loaded on, you would have seen like the young man, you'd have seen him come forward, you'd have seen him go up and up this way. And when that would have happened, then you would have seen the difference here. He's just spinning around He's spinning around and he's spinning around with his upper body. Here, he said, oh, you want me to slide up? Oh, you want me to slide up? I said, that's right, I want you to slide up. And then he could still compress the ball. It went from 29 to 22 degrees. And that's wow. what so much to do with uh, launch monitors and stuff because he went from 29 to 15. I said, even my driver lost more than that at impact. The driver should loft, you know, seven, eight degrees. Well, the iron should de loft, but not 15 degrees. <laughs> That's awesome. I bet he loved it. Yeah, because his most of his shots were really digging in deep because he's trying to do that. So basically, we were trying to get that hip and that shoulder to feel like he was moving up. And he would have been able to see that if we had the pressure mat. He would have been able to see that and feel that he would have felt he would have known that he was turning around uh, the old way. So that was just what was cool. So that was just today in that big wind. <laughs> so nice. I just wanted nice. you to wanted you to see that. I okay. love it. Um, Anna, will you kill Nancy's share? Um, and really quickly while you do that, Daniel Silva has a question. Thank you, Daniel, for tuning in. Daniel's from Canada. 
um, one of our buddies. And he's asking, um, he says, I understood that each individual has a personal trace. There's no real right or wrong, but what are the most um, recognizable traces? And I'll actually answer that for you, Daniel. I have a pressure mat deck that um, we worked on with Terry Hash and Terry diagnosed or has identified, I should say, the top 10 or so traces, but yeah, there's, there's six or seven that are pretty obvious. Um, and I'll send that to you. So if anybody wants it, I'm happy to share it. Daniel, I'll send it to you tomorrow because I clearly have your email address. Um, and Nancy, I would absolutely love for you to do this with us again. Uh, when you're in your studio and it's a little warmer, hopefully, <laughs> in well, Tennessee. I'm happy, I'm happy to do it in my studio where you can see all the technology, but see what I do using that for sure. So, uh, but That's do you want awesome. me to share my uh, information or does everybody have that? So the girls have already put that in the chat window. They've, um, they've put that you're at uh, in Florida till the end of March. And that you're at the Nancy Corselina Golf School with your web address there. Rita is on site in Tennessee if you want a lesson. Um, and so the guy, yeah, she's put the contact information in the, the chat screen over there. And um, other than that, since we're a minute past eight, and I am so thankful for your time, we will see you soon. And I hope that you'll trace with us again in Tennessee. I will be happy to. And thank you very much for allowing me to do Tuesday traces without a trace mat. <laughs> Oh, it's awesome. No problem. But you got to learn how to do it without it. So very good. Love it. All right. Have a good one, Nancy. Happy Thank Tuesday. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very much.